Today I have the keys to the 2020 Maserati Levante S Grand Sport. Huge shout out to Maserati Charlotte for providing this SUV for me today. Definitely check out their website. They also have Bentley, Aston Martin, and a whole bunch of cars to check out. So this model here is finished off in narrow. It has an MSRP just under $97,000. Well, let's go ahead and jump into today's review by starting up underneath the hood, where you'll find the three liter twin turbo V6 engine. This is paired to the ZF8 speed transmission. Maserati has two different three liters for the Levante. This engine pumps out 424 horsepower and 428 pound-feet of torque. That is paired to the Q4 all-wheel drive system. This weighs in around 4,600 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 around five seconds up to its top speed of 164 miles an hour. And with a fuel capacity of 21.1 gallons, you'll expect to see around 15 miles per gallon in the city and 21 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 118.3 inches. Its overall length is 197. It has a width of 77 and a half and a height of 66.1 inches. With all those specs out of the way now, let's go ahead and jump into the exterior walk around on the Levante. I'm gonna start up front with the LED matrix style headlights. They have a really nice design to them. And of course this does have LED DRLs and LED turn signals. You'll see they're interchangeable on the top side of the housing, just giving it a really cool look. I love how sleek the headlight housing is as well, just to add to that really nice appearance. You can see there are fog lights just below that. And then looking at the very large grill, you can see it has some cutouts to provide maximum cooling for this engine. They are spaced pretty far apart just to give it a really aggressive look. We have the Maserati Trident logo right in the center, along with a forward-facing camera nicely placed on the top there. And then just behind that, this does have active grill shutters. So those will open and close at speed just to help improve with better airflow and better aerodynamics. You'll see we have really nice mesh along the lower section, along with parking sensors. And then there's a nice chrome trim piece just underneath the hood. And then making our way to the hood now, there's very nice lines that run down it. Overall, this has a really nice front end design to it. There's some nice contoured lines, especially down on the lower section of the bumper, but it just gives it a very clean look. And then that's gonna lead us onto the side profile now. We're gonna start off with these wheels. They measure 20 inches in all four corners, have a really nice five spoke design to them, along with a two tone finish. Just behind that, you'll see the red brake calipers with Maserati spelled out on them. The front rotors measure 13.6 inches and 13 inches in the rear. Just behind that, you'll see the Grand Sport badge along with some chrome vents. And then we do have body colored side mirrors. They feature the integrated turn signal. They are power folding as well. You'll see a camera underneath each one of them as part of the 360 degree camera system, which I'll show later in this video. You can see there is more chrome trim surrounding the windows along with on the door handles. And then up top, this does feature a full panoramic sunroof. So it has really nice body lines running down the side. I really like this arch over the rear fender here. Just gives it a nice sleek appearance. Same as you saw from the front, carries very nice to the side profile. But now let's go ahead and finish up in the rear where you'll see the body colored spoiler and the integrated third brake light. The wiper blade is on the lower section of the glass to help improve with better visibility. This does have a pretty steeply raked rear glass, but it doesn't hinder any of the visibility as you'll see later in this video. This has LED taillights along with a backup camera and all the parking sensors. Of course, it does have a power lift gate as well. You'll see there's more chrome trim above the backup camera along with on all of the logos. And then down below, we have the quad tip stainless steel exhaust. <laughs> Before we go ahead and jump into the interior of the Levante, I wanna just go ahead and show the remote start. So I have the vehicle locked. I'm just gonna double tap on this button here and it will automatically start up. So that is a really nice feature to see. First, works first try every time. And then of course you can double tap on that and shut it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the vehicle from the key fob. Of course you can just walk up to the door and grab the handle. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the Rosso interior. Basically it's a red. It looks very, very nice. Full leather, of course. We're gonna start off on the door panel here where you'll see black stitching as well. We have some piano black and a really nice brushed aluminum trim piece that goes all the way to the grab handle. There's some seating memory adjustments just in front of that. Of course, we have all the window controls and the side mirror adjustments. This also features an eight speaker Harman Kardon sound system. 
You can see there's a little bit of storage space on the lower section of the door, but I really love this red leather. It gives it a very nice look on the door panel. Making our way to the interior now, you'll see Maserati down on the door sill, and then that rose oak color continues on to the full leather seats. You can see the Maserati Trident logo on the headrest. We have some brushed aluminum just underneath that, and then more stitching and very nice bolstering support to them. They have about a 12-way power adjustability, and of course, you can use all of those controls down on the side. Moving on to the steering wheel now, you'll see it's completely covered in both solid and perforated leather, along with black stitching running along the inside. It has more of the brush trim pieces just to tie in with the rest of the vehicle. Of course, the Trident logo is right in the center. Over on the right side, you'll see the voice recognition button along with your Bluetooth, and then all these dials here will control your main screen in the gauge cluster. Over on the left side, however, you'll see your miles per hour. The tack is on the right side. And then by using that control, right now we are on the main menu so you can see your miles per hour. We can scroll down to vehicle information, which will show you a lot of vital information that you can scroll through. So there's a lot of information in this one tab. We can scroll down to the drive modes. Going one more down, you'll see the driver assistance. So when you have your adaptive cruise on or your lane keeping assist, that is where you can see some of that information. You also have a fuel economy tab along with your trip A, trip B. You have the engine start stop feature, your audio, you have any messages to look at, and then vehicle settings. So just by going into this, you can set up your screen, you have your speed warning, your electronic parking brake, any interior lighting. And then making our way to the left side of the steering wheel, you have all of your cruise and adaptive cruise control settings along with your lane keeping assist. And then making our way to the left side of the steering wheel, you'll see the engine start stop button along with the headlight control and fog light control. We have one air vent, and then you can see more of the red leather covering the entire dash here around the gauge cluster and steering wheel. It looks very nice. You'll see it over on the passenger side as well. One more thing with this vehicle, this does have the column mounted paddle shifters. They are very large, have a nice feel to them. I can't wait to get this out on the road and test those out. Right in the center, you will see a clock along with air vents, which of course you can open and close. And then right in the center, we have the 8.4 inch screen. This is a touchscreen system. So of course you can go through all this information that way or use the controls down below. So you have a power button for the radio along with volume on the top. And then the bottom is how you can control going through all the information on the screen. There's also a back button and then a home button as well. So I'm just going to use this as a touchscreen system right now. You can see on the bottom, we have a lot of presets. You have your engine start stop feature, which of course you can turn on and off along with shortcuts to your radio and your music. Right in the center, this is basically the apps button. You have your heated and ventilated seat controls for driver and passenger, the heated steering wheel. You have your surround view camera, which I'll go ahead and pull up. Right now you can see the top down view on the left side with the backup camera on the right. We can do a full screen, full screen for the front view, and then split the front view. So it's really nice to have those graphics to see around the entire vehicle. We can go ahead and scroll over to your climate controls. You have your phone and navigation, so we can go ahead and pull that up in full screen there. So you can easily get into your climates and adjust everything. You can sync everything together, and of course adjust the temperature for driver and passenger. So it's very easy to go through. Navigation and phone are on the right side. And then there are two air vents on each side of that. And then making your way below that, you have physical buttons for the AC. So if you're not in that screen up top, you can easily adjust the fan speed right in the center. You have where you'd like the air to go and then your temperature controls. And then just underneath that, you'll see this panel black trim piece. You can go ahead and open up this compartment. It gives you a lot of space along with some USB and auxiliaries on the left side. So you definitely have plenty of room to hide any items down there that you'd like to. And then making our way behind that, we'll start off with the gear selector here. It's finished off in leather. I'm just gonna pull on the release trigger up front, go ahead and push it into reverse. You'll see the backup camera up here as I just showed. You can also go all the way down into drive, pop it over into manual mode, and that allows you to shift using this or the column mounted paddle shifters. And then to put the vehicle into park, we'll just click the P on the top. And then making our way to the left side, you'll see we can turn on and off traction control. We have an off-road setting. There's an ice mode by clicking on this button that will increase your control and efficiency. There's a sport mode button, which will change the exhaust note, as you heard in the revs. Hopefully you can hear it on the camera right now. And then there's also a suspension button, so you can put it into S mode for the suspension. You saw all of these controls for that center screen. We have the electronic parking brake along with the hazards. 
and this vehicle offers an adaptive suspension. So you can use this control here to raise the vehicle into its off-road position or lower it all the way to make it easier to enter and exit. So it's very cool how you have those options to go through. And then over on the right side, as I mentioned earlier, there are cup holders under here. So you can just open this up. You'll also see a 12 volt right in the center. We can easily close that and you can see all of the piano black surrounding it, giving it a very nice look. And then working our way to the center armrest here, you'll see there is more red leather covering the entire middle. Gives it a very clean look. Just by clicking on this button, you will see both of those open up. There are two cup holders way down in the bottom, along with a 12 volt, so it gives you a lot of storage space. Very easy to have that right there. And then looking at the glove box now, you definitely have plenty of room for everything that needs to go there. We'll go ahead and take one last look at these beautiful red seats. And then up top, as I mentioned earlier, this does have a full panoramic sunroof. So we can go ahead and open up that shade and it goes all the way to the back passengers, which is very nice to see. It brings in a ton of light. And then up top, you also have the power liftgate control along with being able to tilt the sunroof. You can turn on and off the parking sensors from up here and then turn on all the interior lighting just by clicking on that button. So you'll see it turn on in the rear. Very nice to be able to do that. And then of course you have your dome lights in the front. Making our way to the back seats of the Levante now at five foot 10, I have plenty of room. I have the front seat set at my height. I have a good amount of room for my feet and knees and about two or three inches above my head. So I have no complaints with that. I have these seats actually reclined all the way right now. Just by using that lever on the side is how you control that of course. And then you can use that same control to fold these seats down. So they have a 60-40 split to them just giving you a little bit more versatility in the back. Right in the center, you can see there are two USB ports along with a 12 volt. You have the air vents for your backseat passengers as well, along with some netting for extra storage space. And then we have the same setup on the door panel as you saw up front. So I really love how all of that red leather is carried onto the back. It just gives it a very cool look. If you don't have a middle seat passenger, you have an armrest and two cup holders. And then you can actually fold this piece down and gain access through here if you need to have all the seats up. So you can put in any longer items that you'd like to that can fit through there, which is very nice to see. Last up, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the rear trunk storage space. I'm just gonna use the button on the key fob and it will automatically open up. You have two other ways that you can do that, of course, which is nice to see. But with this open, you can see there's a lot of storage space, even with the back seats up. We have some tie down hooks all around, so that way you can safely secure any items. And then with the back seats folded down, of course that gives you a lot more room to put in any larger items. You can remove this cover too if you'd like to. And then up underneath the floor, there's actually two different compartments. You can open this up and use the Velcro strap to hold it up as well. And you have a nice bin that you can store your items. And then underneath that, of course, we have the spare tire and a little bit more room. You'll also notice over on the right side, there's a strap so you can put in any items there that you'd like to. And then over on the left side, we have the close and lock button and the close button for the power lift gate. There's also a grab handle on both sides if you'd like to use those, but we can go ahead and just push on that button and close it up. All right, so getting the 2020 Maserati Levante S Grand Sport out on the road now, I love getting behind the wheel of a Maserati. They're just so unique and different from other vehicles out there, especially being in this one that has the solid red leather interior. It looks phenomenal against the black exterior. It's a really good contrasting match between those colors. We have the solid leather on the door panels, solid leather on the steering wheel. There's very nice trim pieces that run throughout the interior, as I've already showed in this video. So it's very nice to be behind the wheel of this one. But let's go ahead and put it into some of the fun modes right now. We'll click on the sport mode, so that way we can hear that exhaust and pop it over to use these uh, column mounted paddle shifters, which is my favorite. I love how large they are. They are very easy to use. And now with the vehicle warmed up, let's go ahead and give it a little bit of gas, see how responsive these are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> not even anything crazy, not even half throttle there. And you can hear the pops in that exhaust, especially in sport mode. Let's see if we can hear some on the downshifts. This is what I love about Maseratis. They sound so good. <laughs> And it's super responsive in these shifts. As soon as you hit them, you are into that next gear. And uh, they're very solid feeling. 
I love the fact too that there's no stock on the right side. There's only one on the left side and it sticks out just a little bit farther than the paddle. So you don't have to worry about not being able to get to your turn signal, but you do have all of your wiper controls on there as well. So it's very easy to see. I can actually see it through the steering wheel here, but let's go ahead and talk about visibility while we're at a stoplight here. You can hear that exhaust, it sounds so good. But it's really easy to see all around. As I mentioned earlier in this video with the steeply raked rear glass, you can actually see in the back glass that's in the back seats there and look over both of your shoulders. You can easily see out of the left side and the right side. And then of course you do have your side mirrors to help you as well. So there's virtually no blind spots, which is really nice to see. And then of course you have the 360 degree camera system, which will help you as well. I also like the fact that there's a lot of safety features in this vehicle, like forward collision, you have your blind spot, your adaptive cruise control, and everything like that. So it's nice how you have all those features. But now I wanna go ahead and jump to the suspension. I've had it in the normal mode so far, and it's been a nice, comfortable ride. It's absorbing bumps very well. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the sport mode for the suspension now. I'm on a pretty smooth road, so it's going to be hard to tell, but it does stiffen up the suspension a good bit. If you wanna take this out on some mountain roads or even out on the track, if that's something you wanna do in your Levante, this would be a really good daily driver. I love how versatile it is. So you could easily drive this every single day and then pop over a couple buttons here and then just have a more, uh, almost like a sports car feeling to this vehicle. My brother is actually in the Ghibli right now, which is essentially the same vehicle, just in the sedan form. <laughs> oh, that doesn't get old. So this would pretty much perform like that vehicle. It's a little bit heavier, of course, being an SUV, but you essentially have the same performance, which is really nice to see. So this makes it very good to be able to put in any items that you'd like that are, if you're hauling any larger items, you have the room to do it, but you also have the performance to back up this SUV. <laughs> Even from fourth gear here. Oh, it just sounds so good. But I think that's gonna wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive behind the wheel of the 2020 Maserati Levante S Grand Sport. Once again, huge shout out to Maserati Charlotte for providing this SUV for me today. Definitely check out their website. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video.